congratulations. It is great that you are one of the winners of the flagship project. Could you give me a little bit more thoughts? What is your invention going to change in my life 20 years from now? Well, thank you very much. It's a great opportunity for us to be one of the uh, first flagships uh, of European research. Uh, graphene is a multipotent uh, uh, material. It has a lot of different opportunities. So your question is actually rather difficult. Uh, I would like to uh, quote uh, Herbert Cromer, who uh, is one of the Nobel laureates uh, in physics, who said that the main application of any sufficiently new technology is something that is only made possible by it. So uh, since graphene is a new technology, 20 years is a, a difficult horizon for us to predict, but we can see great applications in uh, flexible electronics, uh, electronic paper is uh, one of the first things coming out, new kinds of composite materials, ubiquitous electronics, you can uh, have electronics in your uh, clothing for instance, or integrated in wallpaper or in uh, many other ways. But uh, because the technology is, uh, has so many different possibilities, it is quite difficult to pinpoint uh, exact uh, application areas in 20 years' time. I got a story that scotch tape is quite close to the whole invention. Yeah. Could you explain a little bit more and how much scotch tape did you use in your experiment? Uh, scotch tape is indeed the, uh, the first method uh, how uh, graphene was uh, made in 2004 in Manchester. Uh, where uh, essentially all you need is a, uh, a pencil and a scotch tape. And uh, in one of the uh, flagship pilot events, I think in Budapest, we actually had uh, a setup where uh, visitors could make their own graphene. And uh, many did, many uh, commission representatives did, I'm not sure if you did. Uh, of course, scotch tape method is uh, something that works very nicely in the laboratory, but it's not going to be the basis of an industry. So one of the things that uh, we are developing is more uh, large-scale production techniques that allow uh, graphene to be produced in right quantities, in right qualities and at the right price. Is this an example in which you can have the understanding that um, our society will change completely? For if it is going through, it is not that costly. It is making a lot of difference uh, talking about aspects that you are mentioning upon. What type of differences in a daily life um, on a short term could we uh, be aware of? And is there a lot of employment, a lot of jobs mm -hmm. connected with this new development? Yeah. And graphene is a ubiquitous technology, so in the future you can uh, imagine graphene being produced roughly the same way as a newsprint is produced today, uh, with uh, very large machines that produce 7 meter wide uh, material at 200 kilometers an hour. And uh, it will certainly have uh, major impact, impacts. Uh, think for instance about uh, lightweight composite materials, because graphene is 1 to 300 times stronger than the uh, strongest steel. Uh, so, uh, in uh, airplanes, in cars, uh, you can reduce the weight, you can uh, improve uh, uh, energy efficiency. Uh, new kinds of uh, uh, medical uh, implants, uh, there are uh, plans for, uh, for instance, retina implants. Uh, there are techniques now that uh, are being developed to use graphene membranes uh, to desalinate uh, seawater uh, to make it portable. So it, uh, it's a technology that has very wide application area. So it will certainly penetrate the life of Europeans on many levels. And because of these great opportunities, we see that there is also great potential for new products, uh, new investment opportunities, new uh, job opportunities and increased economic growth in, in Europe. Professor, no scarcity of resources. Um, I'm, I'm mm. wondering what your thought is. And does this mean that steel industry will be gone after a couple of decades when this is all normal stuff, so to say? Uh, to answer your first question, there is no scarcity of materials because you can you use just about any carbon-containing material to make uh, graphene. I've heard reports where people have started from chocolate to make graphene. I personally think there are better uses for chocolate. <laughs> uh, uh, we are not out to, uh, to uh, put an end to the steel industry and we are not out to put an end to the silicon industry. Uh, we don't want to replace steel or silicon. We want to do things that cannot be done uh, with the existing uh, materials platforms.
Well, if you are explaining that it is lighter, uh, that it is perhaps less costly compared to other uh, raw materials that are needed for uh, production of certain products, then I can imagine that this will be a changing, not only of the mindset, but a changing of our industrial policy and talking about all the uh, opportunities that are at stake. Yeah. Uh, Andre Game, who's one of the uh, people who uh, received the Nobel Prize for uh, uh, groundbreaking experiments with graphene, uh, sometimes compares uh, graphene to plastics. Uh, the same kind of impact as plastics had in our lives in the uh, 20th century. Uh, that's something that we can uh, compare graphene to in the 21st century. Now I'm uh, attracted to uh, the question, what are the consequences for our environment? Uh, graphene is uh, carbon, yeah. uh, so uh, okay. as such, uh, the environmental consequences are going to be uh, rather minor. Of course, you uh, can see that if we uh, take graphene and, uh, and we burn it, we'll create some carbon dioxide. But by comparison, that, that is a minuscule amount uh, because we are only talking about a material that is a single atomic level, uh, atomic layer thick. So uh, the environmental issues and health issues are something that are an integral part of the flagship. We will uh, invest significant funds to explore them, but uh, presently we do not see that there are any uh, worrying issues there. Professor, now graphene is still in the labs. Uh, can you, with um, the award you got, the money you, uh, you got, can you just get um, the graphene out of the labs into industrial processes? Uh, you are pretty much uh, uh, saying the, uh, the f uh, final line of uh, my presentation in the press conference in a few minutes, where we want to take uh, graphene from the European academic laboratories to the European society. That's what we want to do, have academics and industry work together and to make sure that this, the fruits of this uh, European research uh, can be harvested in Europe. Thank you so much. We are interested in the graphene valley in Europe and perhaps their valleys. Thank you. Thank you very much.